Welcome back to another episode of The Pickle Pulse. I am Brian Green, your host, and I am here with the one and only Dave McNally. What's up, Dave? What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me, Brian. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Man, I'm excited to have you. I'm So, this is episode four now, and I always like to say that so I can keep up with it, um, but I'm really pumped to have you here, here because I started playing about three years ago, and I didn't know you at the time, but I think the first time I ever met or, or saw you, you were playing at Pickleballers, and I think you were the pro maybe teaching at the time? Yeah, I was their first teaching pro um, when they opened, um, I think it ended up being in January 20... 2021, maybe? Yeah, it's yeah, 2020, I think, maybe even. Okay. I, I, or, no, no. It, wasn't, it was like October 2020. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, because uh, I started playing in like June of 2020 right. when everything was shut down and I had to get out of the house. Yeah. So I, they kind of recruited me to, uh, to be the first pro, um, at that, this local, um, first indoor spot in Northern Virginia. Mm-hmm. I was excited to do it. Hadn't really taught pickleball very much at that point. I just had a really bad experience. I, uh, <laughs> didn't last there very long. And then with the pandemic, I ended up moving down to my brother's house okay. afterwards in yeah. um, Central, so, like Southern Virginia. Let's go Southern. Let's go precursor to that a mm-hmm. little bit. And that, um, <laughs> how did you find pickleball? At, when we got into 2020, had you been playing for a while where you're being recruited as a pro? Like, uh, do you have a background in other paddle sports? Just uh, what what's your story when it comes to pickleball and how did you get to that point? So... Um, I, I mentioned my brother, uh, I, we, and I are very close. Like he's, uh, almost exactly three years older than me. I'm 34. He's 37. Okay. Um, but yeah, we were just always super close growing up. Um, I always looked up to him still do. Um, he, he has a couple of kids, so he got involved with the local YMCA where he lives in uh, Spotsylvania County, Virginia. And, you know, he's, he and I were growing up mostly playing basketball. That mm-hmm. was um, our our sport that we really uh, just loved. And we used to go out and just like play one-on-one. We used to go to shoot jumpers. Just like that was our sport growing up. Um, and so, you know, of course, like he's he's at the gym at the YMCA in Spotsy County. And sure enough, he's just shooting around and he sees a couple of folks playing, yeah, this very unusual game. Wow. On okay. an indoor, right, in a, in a gymnasium. So what year was this? This you know? was in the spring of 2018. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I really should go back and figure out when it was, but it was the spring of 2018. And uh, he, uh, you know, I think they kind of saw that he was looking over and he, you know, they're as pickleball are, but pickleball people are, they're just very welcoming and mm-hmm. very friendly. I was looking for some new blood to join the, the cult. <laughs> and so, <laughs> well said. <laughs> yeah. So they were very nice. They said, Hey, come play with us. And, you know, he hit a couple balls and, you know, I think he just kind of really understood, like, this is really fun. And then I'm pretty sure he, you know, picked up his kid and then called me and he was like, Dave, like, we got to start playing pickleball, man. It's so fun. Have you heard of it? And wow. I was so like, he was immediately hooked, like hit it around a little <laughs> bit and like, this is crazy fun. He just knew it was really fun. He knew. And yeah, my brother, he, he's a really smart guy, but also just really enjoys the simple things. And so he was like, Dave, we, you know, you got to play it. And it was so funny, like within maybe a week of that, um, I was actually playing, um, adult basketball leagues with legends. Okay. That's so I had already known, um, was that Ron at the time, Ron Cort- Cortez. Um, yes, he, like me and my buddies, we were just playing in like a 30 plus league. Um, funny story. I was actually, uh, the MVP of the league when I was 29 years old. <laughs> this was <laughs> the awesome. secret. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> dropping the big secrets here on the, the pickle pulse. Um, so yeah, I'd known Ron cause he would always come to the, uh, championship games and just like photograph and, you know, he would just always kind of part of it. So I was on the email list for legends basketball. And then yeah, he just sent out this like spam email kind of thing. Like, Hey guys, like inaugural pickleball league coming out. And so I was like, wow, this is awesome. Well, like, and he did that, uh, indoor at the rec center out on, on 50, right? Wasn't yeah, it? That's yeah. where he was doing his tournaments, but no, we were playing at like an ele- or elementary school or middle school in false church. Wow. I don't even remember where it was, but, um, yeah. So I was like, oh, this is awesome. So I signed up for that league. Just, um, I think it was like the I think Maybe I signed up for the B league uh, with my boy who I was, my friend, Jeremy Wickman, shout out to my really good friend, Jeremy. 
uh, he was, he, we were just playing basketball together, um, in the league and, uh, just, you know, Jeremy, we, and I would play ping pong at his like office sometimes. So I don't know. We we're just like, let's fun. So, so you don't have any like high level tennis, racquetball background. No, any of that. no, I never played tennis. Um, I, I took a, like a one credit class in college. Okay. Um, I loved it, but yeah. just this super easy, a something fun to do. Oh yeah. It wasn't even for an A. It was just like, you got a credit, which okay. I needed. <laughs> um, so I play that, you know, that was that's my tennis career. No, I never played um, anything like that. I always wanted to. Mm-hmm. I, I really always did. I like. I used to watch like, tennis with my dad a bunch. Mm-hmm. Like he just kind of was like a fan of the game, and like it was. I have this fond memories with him, just like watching finals, and like, I got. I loved it. You know, yeah. I, I could see that these guys are elite athletes, and what they're doing is amazing. And I was always inspired, but I never played. Um, yeah, I was kind of well, and that's because, and I think we've talked about it on previous pods, but. Tennis, I mean, literally, you're chasing the ball the whole time. You might get a three-shot rally unless you practice for a year and actually learn. the. It's kind of like golf. A lot of people show up to play golf, and they're just not good at it at all. Yet they'll continue to show up because it's fun to get around, but you'll never really get to a point unless you focus. Uh, You'll never get to a point where you're good and you can get around the course. And same thing in tennis. You'll never get to a point where you're going to have a 10-shot rally unless you hire a pro. You learn the correct way to do it. And um, I think that's where pickleball wins uh, a lot. And that guys like you and I, because I also do not have a, a background in any tennis. I played a little bit. My mom was cool, and she put me in some lessons when I was a kid. But I'm a serial hobbyist, and that was just one of the 15 things that I loved to do at the time. So I never got good at it. Um, and I played a little racquetball too, but that was just to beat up on a couple of friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that's cool. I agree. I, I wholeheartedly agree. So yeah, basically, you know, just played a played a league. Mm-hmm. Um, I specifically remember like my friend Jeremy and I like we we like couldn't figure out how to score. <laughs> like was, we were yeah. pretty good at keeping pe- other people from scoring, mm-hmm. but we couldn't figure out how to score. Like we didn't know what a drop was. Yeah. Um. You know. Yeah. We got my you got the new Peepo paddles from Amazon that just like the you Frank know, just Anthony Davis. Or did you go the lower end? No. We, it's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. It's funny because they ended up kind of becoming like a bigger one. But yeah, you'll see that. I see that people still with these paddles out there. But yeah, just bought you know ra- random paddles. Couldn't figure out how to score, but had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So that was spring of 2018, and just you know, then I actually met like John Brown, and it's hilarious. His his doubles partners in in that league. Um, was his son, Jonathan, yeah. 11 years old at the time. And yeah, he, John and Jonathan and Jeremy and myself, we would make finals a bunch and okay. we would have some wars. So was Alex playing at the same time as um, well? She was playing mixed, yeah, with her dad. Okay. Very casually, she remember she really didn't like it very much. But yeah, oh. just kind of through, like, through Legends, like I met, you know, the Trongs. And, you know, I love the Trongs. So I've known them for a long, long time. So, you know, I just even from the get-go, like, I just kind of could tell, like, I'm making good relationships, good bonds. Mm-hmm. Um, when I remember seeing some uh, old pictures from Ron that, like, uh, Monica Palicelli was in some of his early leagues. Yeah, I think she only played the tournaments. But, yeah, okay. yep, that one in Franklin Middle School you were talking about. Yep, yep. Soon after, they had Ron start organizing some tournaments. Um, and then I really was kind of more taking it seriously. I remember I got a membership to uh, Thomas Jefferson Community Center here in Arlington County, mm-hmm. um, where I was living at the time. And, yeah, that's kind of when I was, like, really playing it, like, every day, basically, where I would – like my wife, fiance at the time was going to work. Um, I had a lot of like free time in the day. And that's also kind of where I met um, co-host here, Mike Strain. Yeah. Um, more seriously, because I knew who he was already. Um, yeah, because he had already been playing for like two years at that point. Yeah. In, in, uh, in old folks homes and community centers. <laughs> yeah. No, Mike, um, I have so much respect for Mike. And um, I really, uh, yeah, I, so yeah, I, I met, John, I met Jonathan, I met Ron, of course, who, who's a really solid player and just a, just a great force for, um, the areas, Mm -hmm. uh, our, our area becoming a very competitive place because, you know, he put together a lot of tournaments, like early tournaments, like what you're saying, like gymnasiums, um, in middle schools, just random. But like at the time, like, you know, in 2019, 2018, 2020 people were playing. No, not many people were playing and not a fewer people were organizing tournaments. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Ron, because th- he leveraged all he learned with his adult league stuff for basketball, baseball and stuff. So he he um, definitely applied a lot of his skills and brought a lot of people together. And I do, I think somehow or other, I met 
um, and Fam and David Hale, yep. maybe through TJ. And then I think I remember one night I played in like a, yeah, I guess some random gymnasium. And I heard like, I was like, oh, guys, Mike Strain's coming. Mike Strain's coming. And then, <laughs> no way. yeah. And I was <laughs> like, who's Mike? And like, you know, I didn't know who he was. And then, yeah, he showed up. And I just remember being like, this guy is like the man. Yeah. Like his finesse was just something I had never seen before. And I frankly wasn't even, I didn't start off as a banger. Yeah. You know, I just kind of actually started trying to develop my soft game pretty early relatively, like independently. Um, I didn't have a tennis background just to like bang away at, right? Mm -hmm. So... But yeah, Mike, I just was like, whoa, this dude is legit. And, you know, Mike's energy, he's so chill. Like, he's so calm. Yeah. And could still just, like, you know, just work any any point, work you, just make it look so easy. And um, Yeah, he's definitely a puppet master at the kitchen line at times, man. He was moving the ball around, lots and lots of spins. Yeah. And that's that's what I remember about him early on. And so so you're hooking up with Mike. You're playing with your brother. And then we're getting up into 2020 and the game starts to explode a little more. You, you come on as a pro because you're at that point, like I know when I started, it was Mike and it was you and um, like the Trongs were probably like the top players that I could think of that I'd met, that I had seen. And so, um, you know, you're there and you start playing lots of tournaments, I, I would assume. And so from there, like, did you have a goal to to maybe take it to a higher level, to a pro level? Did you always just do it for fun? Kind of what has pickleball meant to you? Yeah, so um, early on, it, yeah, it was like th just, right. My brother was playing a lot, um, and he was he and I um, naturally just wanted to become tournament partners. Mm -hmm. And I remember we played our first tournament in uh, January 2019, some local thing in uh, Richmond. Um, he and I didn't know what to do. We signed up for four zero. There was also a four five who we stayed and watched after. You want to know who won that tournament? Who? Take one guess. Uh, one guess. Mike Strain. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike. I think he won with um Sam Runnelson, another kind of OG. What Sam? Sam. No. Pretty way. sure. Yeah. I mean, you should ask Mike, but yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And I didn't uh, even know Sam has been playing that long, and I play with him all the time. Yeah. Okay. Yep. S Sam was Sam was definitely the man. Um, still is the man. Yeah. So yeah, we p we played in in um four zero. We won our first tournament, and yeah, just kind of like it was it was so fun. Like it's it was just yeah. So this is twenty 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 nineteen uh, January twenty nineteen. So almost five years ago. So I'm in my late twenties. It just felt like great just to have um, an ability to like compete with my brother athletically, especially. Um, he and I just love to play games, um, you know, love to just do everything, anything together, especially compete with each other. We love doing that. So that was it was like a nice kind of like way to kind of recapture some of our um, just like like a bedrock of our brotherhood. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, he and I played a bunch of tournaments together local tournaments and you know naturally he's older and he's been married for a lot longer than I have so he has a bunch of children and he has you know a lot of commitments so just kind of naturally like he he didn't have as much time to dedicate to the game and I have so much time to dedicate to the game so I got so into it and was just kind of traveling for some more tournaments playing a lot more tournaments naturally needing new partners so yeah just kind of like building up from there and I just I I just really wanted to like get better. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be like, I, yeah, I had so much respect for like the, the best players in in the area. And I just kind of wanted to, I wanted to beat them. I wanted to be them. I wanted to beat them. And that kind of motivated me. Were you as geeky as me? And you went and found like pro pickleball on YouTube and started mm -hmm. watching and, and seeing those guys, like the, the Kyle Yates of the world at the time, the Ben Johns. Um, gosh, who was, there was a gearbox guy, and I'm drawing a blank on his Joey name. Joey Farius? Yeah, Farius. And he was – so just watching all those guys down in Florida playing go, and wow, man, I, I, I wonder if I can get that good. 
Um, it's my, I, I have this distinct memory of my brother showing me. He's like, Dave, like th- it was on CBS Sports, whatever it was. Like I, it must have been US Open. Now that I think about it, but like he was like, oh, let's watch some of the top guys. I thought it was so boring because <laughs> yeah, they're for- dinking, right? Just soft, 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 and lots of dinking. Yeah, lots of dinking. The production value wasn't great. I was just like, eh, I, yeah. I don't know. But then you know. Sh- at some point in the future, I just got so into it, right? I just loved watching, getting inspired. Yeah, and it was kind of around the time when Ben Johns and Kyle were playing with each other. And, I mm-hmm. mean, um, you know, especially since Ben is a, a Maryland native, like, you know, that always was a little inspiring um, to, to know that one of, not, he's definitely not one of us, but just someone from a neighboring state, this mm-hmm. youngster dedicated to the game, getting to the top of the game, that, that definitely inspired me. So uh-huh. you um you just hit on something that I, I think would be really interesting to talk about and that I also uh, at times still find professional pickleball, especially men's doubles, to be just a little bit boring, hard to watch at times. And um, it's just because there's so much power in the game and there's so much dinking. Um, do you think that uh, that the game is going to get harder and faster with these wilder paddles? And then do you like that? I mean, I know at one point you were playing with a carbon that just hit so hard. Every time I played you, I was like, damn. Um, but yeah, it was probably delaminated. <laughs> yeah, probably a little bit. Uh, but, um, you know, what, what's your take on, on the, the game getting faster, less stinking? And do you think it's going to go that way? Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, I, I like the evolution of the game. You know, I think it's, uh, that's fine. Like, I think that's what it's whatever, you know, just whatever happens, happens. Like, I think there should be kind of like, people should be free to kind of experiment with what they want to do and develop new styles. Um, and yeah, I think it's just cool when like, you know, cause yeah, I think kind of when I was kind of coming up, like, I know, especially Mike was a big influence to me. just like the soft game, the soft game, the soft game. Yeah. And, um, you know, investing a lot of time in developing that. And of course, like the paddles at the time maybe weren't as conducive to overpowering people, but you know, still, you know, there, there were people who that's what that's their game. Well, and then, the, you know, the funny thing is the power game came in and in my opinion, uh, the waters, yeah. Annalie and her mom came and they were just plowing through people, yep. drive and crash, drive and crash. Yep. And so people started taking that on and now it's kind of come into a whole new, uh, ball game. Just like I was talking to you this morning while we were drilling a little bit. Yeah, is that you know? It, I think a great thing, even at like the four five five zero level, is to drive and crash for the first couple and see how the team handles it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I and, and to kind of tie that into um, our area, like I, I specifically remember um, when uh, yeah, our local talent Alex Strong, um, Virginia girl, she's out there on the APP tour, killing it mm-hmm. and playing in the MLP. It is so happy for her and just for our area like it's just awesome to see her and doing what she's doing that's right but stay I, mean alex stay, stay mean. mean yeah <laughs> absolutely um i just remember specifically like when her she she and her father john used to play with each other in the mixed tournaments locally and i remember they would win 4-0 and with very aggressive style and i know that alex drove a lot of or modeled a lot of her game off of annalee okay and i think yes yeah, so and and John too is very like aggressive, like you know, just kind of style player, just like aggressive, aggressive. And like I just remember being like, oh, like they won four zero. Well, you know, they can bang out the four zeros, but like, can they do it a four five? Yeah. Sure enough, they go up to four five. Don't change their style at all. Win four five. I'm wow. like, oh, well, you know, they can't do it a five zero. <laughs> Guess what they did? <laughs> they started hitting right through people, and and no, it's just really interesting part of the game now because. With the with the Dura being the ball currently, um, when you're hitting it really hard and with the amount of spend you're getting with the carbon fiber faces, you can get that ball to dip below the net. And then when that person is trying to get it back, even if they're just punching it or trying to block it, it has to go up if it's below the net as it gets to you at the kitchen line. So the driving crash, I think, is a, a, a really smart thing to do absolutely yeah i mean it, it's like it doesn't matter how good your dinks are if you can't return a tough serve that again that's usually what those aggressive players are going to do they're going to work on hitting some aggressive serves oh yeah so if you're kind of a, a person who that's yeah that's an evolution of the game so i think a lot of people like to slice their returns that feeds into like people liking top to spin. hit yeah. heavy top spin thirds that 
brings a lot of pace and then someone can bring a lot of pressure on the fifth. So now you're seeing like the natural evolution of the game is people are hitting more flat returns, more top spin returns, making it harder for the quote unquote bangers or more aggressive players to hit aggressive drives. So it, yep. it just like, I just think there's just kind of always this push and pull and adjustments. I think it's cool. I think, yeah, the paddle technologies and stuff like just bring it, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I just think it's a little crazy to, to try to, well, you it's know, funny as like, everything. I, I waver on it because I would agree that it's more entertaining to watch on TV, right? Yeah. If, if you've got chaos on the court, but the ball keeps going back over, meaning guys are digging yeah. and running. I mean, that's fun to watch, crazy points. And that's a, hey, we're getting top 10s on ESPN now. Yeah. And that's that's super cool. Um, so right. I think that comes from the paddle technology, from the balls dipping, from it being hit hard and less of the, I mean, look, they're not going to do a 100-shot dink rally on ESPN and so this is super cool um so I, I like that now on the other side of it I'm I'm 43 now I'm getting older I don't think my hands are as fast as I want them to be and I'm sure I could work on it um but uh, I get mad when I play with the the Dillons of the world the the LJs of the world where they're they're cranking it they're super fast and I just can't quite keep up now does that mean that things should change no it probably means I should just get better <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think you can get better. I think, yeah, you will get better. Yeah. Even if it's incremental and y you know, like the, the court, the court's the same size, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> the courts, <laughs> what 44 feet. Yeah. They're hitting it harder and sure they can put some more tops in but it's like, Hey, they're it's probably going out. Yeah. You yeah. know? So it, I, I just think there's, there's always an answer to, to kind of like even spin serves. Like I was thought they were kind of crazy at first and then I was like, Oh, this is cool. Yeah, and then I think pe basically people got better at returning spin serves. Did you play against Eli Powell's spin serve? Ever? I did. That yep. thing was psycho. <laughs> yeah, was Eli. No fun. <laughs> yeah, and I remember, like, I remember he was always hanging around pickleballers um, with Gage, mm -hmm. uh, who's now uh, the pro there. Shout out to Gage and Eli. And yeah, I just remember, like, oh, I was like, this kid's got a lot of potential. Like, I just remember being like this, and I just love that. Like, you know, that's that's what attracted maybe not entirely, but like, you know, I was like, Oh, this kid has a good spin serve. Mm -hmm. Now I got to get a better return to serve on my spin serve. Yeah. It wasn't about me trying to like, Oh, I'm going to be better than this kid because I'm going to like kind of keep my old school rules. It's like, no, I, I want that new blood. I want the new creativity. I want to make adjustments. Yep. If people's paddles are hotter, even with D land paddles, it's like, let the ball go, <laughs> let the ball go. That's the answer. It's like, you know, like give them a low ball and let the ball go. Like there's always an answer. You yeah. Know? There's always like a, a rock to the paper and, or paper to the rock. So yeah, that's kind of generally my philosophy. Okay. I like it. I like it. I think that's uh that wraps that up beautifully. So, um, you have uh, a spot on YouTube for shot pickleball. Uh, it's been around for a couple of years and I'll say that one of the things I really like about it is just all the high level games that you put in there. Um, you know, how did that come about? Is that just like a, a labor of love? Something like where you at on that? Yeah, I think I uh, I started it like like two whatever three September's ago or something like that. Um, I just at the time I I always just liked um, like my dad was always big on like just video recording like just, you know like the camcorders growing up. Mm -hmm. I love those videos. Like you know, it was really good about taking pictures. So just from a young age, I kind of understood the value of just documenting things with photographs. And, um, especially with today's age, it's really easy to do with your smartphone and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Yeah. So, you know, originally I was like live streaming. I could tell, I, yeah, somehow or other, I was like, Oh, you know, you can live stream on YouTube. This is cool. Or on Facebook, excuse me. Um, this is cool. And then, I kind of realized I was like, man, I'm spamming all my like high school friends with like <laughs> <laughs> pickleball my videos. Pickleball videos, and you're like, go on. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, like, you know, like let me just kind of like separate this my world into two two um, buckets here. So that's when I decided to make a YouTube channel. Um, originally, I really wanted to live stream, but yeah, I couldn't do it because I don't have a thousand subs. Um, which is fine. So I just ended up kind of more just recording stuff on my phone and uploading them. And yeah, just for my own sake, like I think it's so underrated. Like I think everyone knows that it's important to watch film on yourself, mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of people don't and a lot of people don't take the footage. So I, um, 
I just kind of understood the value in that. And even just for like posterity, you know, like I, if I want to, like, if I think I know that John Brown has like a finals from legends. Oh really? Yeah. He sent it to us forever ago, but like maybe he still has it, but just something like that. Like how cool would it be to watch me playing pickleball five years ago now? Oh, I like it. Yeah. And, and I think like, even if you take a video today, you got to think about like, Hey, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Yeah. Well, that's what I was looking through your videos and I went back and watched a little bit of, uh, one of your matches, it was you and your brother against Mike Strain and Dan Morelli, I think okay, his name nice. was. And d I remember playing Dan a couple of times. He hits the ball so hard. I don't know where he is, though. I haven't seen him. Yeah, yeah he, he he lives in Annapolis. Um, yeah, he's still around. He's, he's got married. He's, he's okay. still playing pickleball. Yeah. Nice. Good, Big. good. Still, still got a lot of power, I'm sure, in his left hand. <laughs> Dude, unreal. Yep. Unreal. But, like, watching some of those old games and how you guys play, it's just it's very interesting to me, and I agree. I, I kind of like just getting video out there and being able to see the progression of, mm -hmm. of what you're doing. Yeah. So I just kind of like, like to take video and then naturally like you want to do some stuff with like highlight reels. I just kind of wanted to dabble in a couple other like paddle reviews and um, some educational stuff, just kind of whatever um, I, I wanted to do. I thought it was kind of a cool way to um, explore um, just the pickleball world. And mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's, it's hard to edit videos and manage this. I don't do it very well, but it, it's just something that I can kind of learn and, and just kind of do when I want, like it's, it's fun. And you know, it, it's cool. Like I will say like, there's times I'll go to out to a tournament and people be like, Oh, like someone I don't know is like, Oh, that's four shot pickleball. Like, or they'll come up to me and they'll say like, Oh, Hey, I've watched your YouTube videos before. Yeah. And I'm just like, that's really cool. Like, <laughs> you know, sometimes I got, you know, I miss at home, like just working on some video or some meme or something for hours. And then sometimes I don't even put it out, but you know, it's just then eventually like, you know, whatever I do post and I'm always kind of like, ah, oh, man, this is trash. And then <laughs> someone will just be like, just say that they saw it. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Like, it, yeah, that's, that's not why I do it, but it, it's cool. Like yeah. that people like that I don't think I've really inspired anyone, but like just, just to know that people actually are, do, you know, are watching it, even if the views or the f subs aren't what you want it to be, like it, it makes it worth it. And it's just worth it for me. It's just a nice personal like project of mine. Yeah. 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 And that's kind of what this is for me. It's, it's fun. And, and that's, and that's why I really wanted to come on, on this podcast. Cause I, I just love people doing, so, you know, putting yourself out there. Um, and, just saying like, Hey, I'm not so good at it right now, but I'm going to do it. And I just think, uh, that's so good that you're doing that. And honestly, like props to you and yeah. strain and broker. Like I'm really, yeah. Proud of you guys, honestly, because it takes balls to do something like this. Oh dude, and it's I want so much fun. Yeah, it's fun. But Hey, like you still got to put yourself out there for sure. and you know, in, invest in, in time and money. So I'm happy for you. And I, I hope this, uh, just, you guys just keep having fun. Yep. And that, that's kind of the goal this year is just have a lot of fun, get better and, and do more. But it, you know, it reminds me, so my background is sales. I, um, I started with a company like 23 years ago and I make, uh, custom tailored clothing for guys in their home or office. So I don't actually have a store you walk into or anything like that. Um, but what this does, it's, it's really invigorated me recently in that it, I feel like I'm in my first year of sales where I'm out looking for clients where I'm constantly thinking about the business. Um, you know, what did I do in a sales presentation? that I thought was really good and really bad and just improving upon it. And that is how I, you know, built up all of what I've built so far. Um, not an empire, but definitely have done well for myself. And, um, you know, to get that excitement is, I think that's what pickleball brought to me originally is just like another thing that I can get really good at mm -hmm. and, and see the progression of. Um, but I, I know that when I'm learning, when I'm challenging myself, when I'm pushing, that is where I'm happiest. And, uh, and it brings me kind of, uh, peace, uh, per se, because, you know, I, I, the people that I meet that are stagnant and you can tell the, the attitude is there and it's, it's just not fun. And I feel bad for them. I want, I'm like, we need to get you a hobby. I say that to people all the time and they're like, Oh, no, just, just try something. It's okay to be bad at something. It's okay to be yeah, bad amen. and get better. And, um, amen. You know, that's what this is. I think that's what pickleball is. And then, you know, in life, it's okay to be bad at life, but you can get better. <laughs> yeah, that's beautifully said. Yeah, yeah I, I love that message. <laughs> and I agree. Yeah, that's, um, I think that's just kind of, I think a lot of people who play pickleball, like, you know, we're, we're hitting around a wiffle ball, um, growing ass people, like, in like 40 degree, 30 degree weather. It's, 
you know, it, you got to check your ego, mm-hmm. you know, like I think a lot of people like put their pride aside and say, I'm just going to go have fun playing pickleball. Yeah. And that just attracts a lot of like very humble and yeah. You know, people with kind of attitudes like that, that are, I think are very healthy in life and for us are on the court. So yeah, I think that's why we love the game and that's why we keep playing and just wanting to continue to develop ourselves and our relationships and yeah, just keep, just keep life fun. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's very fun. So the, the next thing I want to talk about is just, um, so looking from far and the first time I showed up, Chestnut Forks is kind of a famous place in my mind and around here. And, um, it was Colin's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Colin. Hi, Shout yeah, out happy to your birthday. big dog. Uh, but I saw your post to him that thanks for keeping CF open all those late nights for us degenerates who want to stay out and play. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's just so perfect because I'll never forget the first time I showed up, Jeremy Lasich, my boy, uh, took me out and he had somehow gotten invited and I show up and you were there and strain was there and I walk in and I'm immediately like intimidated. I'm like, Oh no, four O'Brien's walking in here and these guys aren't going to want to play with me, but I'm happy to be here because I've been dying to get games with the better guys just to see how you do. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I think everyone was gracious and, you know, I got a game or two, but I also learned about the chestnut forks, no look. <laughs> and, you know, it, but at the same time, I have driven home from there really mad early on about it. And as I've gotten older, I've learned that it's, you just got to pay your dues. You got to pay your dues and eventually you'll get invited into the games that you want to be in. But to be out there and to get in those games meant a whole lot at the time to me. And, um, you know, I, I guess I'm bringing this up because one of my next guests is um, I am going to go out to CF and we're going to do a pod from there with Colin. Oh, that's awesome. Because um, I, I just want to talk to him about his thing because he's a high level tennis guy. And obviously he doesn't hate on pickleball like some of the tennis people in, out there do. So yep. I think that's very cool. And again, happy birthday, Colin. Um, yeah, I, I'd love to say something about that too. A um, couple of things like, uh, yeah, I think uh, even it's easy to come into pickleball and to come into anything, but it, we'll just use pickleball right now. You walk into a yeah gym or you walk into a tennis bubble. There's, there's the good players, you know, they're playing with each other. And yeah, I, I was, I think everyone on that court who is quote unquote the man, was at one point, you know, you walking through that door and right. It, it, you, you just hit the nail on the head. Like, um, you wanted to show up, you want to be, you want to be there, but Hey, maybe today's not your shot, mm-hmm. but if you keep on putting in the work and you keep showing up and you know, you, you keep thinking about how you want to get better, you're going to get better. Time will pass. And eventually that four is going to one person, you know, had an emergency, they can't make it. So they're going to need somebody. Yep. And you know, it's like that. I love this uh, Woody Allen expression um, quote. It's like 80% of life is just showing up. So if you're the kind of person that like, Hey, who shows up there all the time? Oh, Brian shows up all the time. It's like, okay, let's get Brian out there. Let's see if he can make it. You know, like maybe you weren't the first one that they wanted, but Hey, you're the one who's going to be playing with them. Mm -hmm. So it's just to kind of keep that hunger alive. And yeah, like the resentment and the, um, I don't know, maybe like the envy that can, that can be there. It's a natural like response, but yeah, I, I don't think we should try to feed that. It's okay to have it, but like just keep the hunger, keep getting better. And yeah, like that's ultimate. And, and of course, like I want to say this, like be nice, mm-hmm. you know, like I think if you start kind of with that negative energy, like people don't want to play with negative people. Yeah, agreed. Like I would much rather play with a nice person who's not as talented than a really talented person who's a total asshole. Yeah. So, um, and I've definitely met those people and walked away from that game. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and that's something as I'm getting older and just playing the game for longer, I'm just not tolerating anymore. Like yeah. I, sometimes I just rather not play then, than playing a toxic game. So yeah, just stay nice and hunger and hungry and you'll get your shot. Yeah. Like you'll get your shot. I tr- trust me. I was the guy looking up to Mike strain and then yeah, Mike and I are playing together now and it's just like, uh, you know, it, that's just a little um, story, but it's, it's a true story. Mm-hmm. And if you're feeling on the outside now, just like keep hungry, stay hungry. Yep. Do and, drill with whoever you're playing with drill, work on the things that you need to. And it's, it really is perspective. And, and, you know, the, again, just, it's all about life. It's a pickleball life, golf, all of it's the same thing. 
and that you go into it with the right perspective and yes you want the games but like know that they'll come when you're ready for them and if you show up just as you said um no i, I love that so we can find you at four shot pickleball out there i think you're doing some teaching now on the side a little bit here and there yeah um that's yeah i like i like to do that here and there um is that something that like um you know people can reach out to you and and just like shoot you a dm or whatever or is that something is it known i mean do you have like a website and or a place no i only ask that because here's the deal people is that i got the pleasure of, of drilling with you for an hour and i knew a couple of holes in my game but after we played a couple of games and drilled, I realized that the one hole I thought was the biggest is not the biggest. It's my transition game. Mm. And um, so if you want that kind of experience, I think Dave is awesome at helping you to see some of the areas um, to not be overly aggressive at times, um, but then be aggressive in the right time and let you know, okay, that bad was so ball or that ball was so bad that I could easily put it away and here's what's going on. Um, so, uh, you know, you're teaching a good bit. And it, it's easy to find you. You're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. Yeah, I made. Um, you can find me on Four Shot Pickleball on Instagram. McNally PB on Instagram. I just made that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I would, I'm open to giving lessons. Um, but yeah, that's uh, whatever you want to do. Just reach out to me. Shoot me a follow. He's super chill. Uh, it, a little bit uh, intimidating if you see his background and all the W's and the gold medals racked up, but super chill. And um, so what, what's next for you, man? What's coming in 2024? Um, Are you a goals guy like me? I'm in sales, so, like, I've been bred to just, like, set goals, write them down. <laughs> no, that's that's cool. I, I respect it. I've watched um, the two episodes um, that have come out of the Pickle Pulse. Uh, I know that you like to talk, talk about that. Um, I did think about what I was going to say, and um, I think that just for me, I, I just want to I just want to keep getting better. I know that's very loose, but <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of more like Pickles Paul, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> he, I liked his answer. He said he's one goes with the flow or whatever. Yep. But and he also said that um, you probably benefit from writing, writing things down. So you know what, Brian? You know, what? I'm actually gonna write some stuff down for 2024. Okay. They might be vague, but I do feel like I just want to keep getting better. Mm-hmm. My personal game. Um, I would like to qualify for a, a pro draw, uh, whatever that will be. Are you going to play singles and doubles? Are you going to keep going that way? I think so. Yeah. Um, I know James, I think, am I in James's seat? What you are in James's seat. Yeah. Right, nice. nice. <laughs> what up James? Um, yeah, I, I'm definitely not a very, uh, I guess I'm good at singles, but whatever. Like it, it, that's not my specialty. I think I'm a better doubles player, mm-hmm. but Hey, it's like once you're already sinking down the registration fee for, uh, yeah, yeah doubles and stuff. Yeah. I might as well just kind of try everything. So yeah, I'd love to try to, to qualify in singles. Um, I'll definitely train a little bit. i probably with James. That'd be fun. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just so hard to get partners. You know what I'm saying? Especially oh, the way they're doing it now. It's like, you got to qualify on like Wednesdays and all that. So I'm going to say, yeah, I would love to qualify. That's a goal for me. I'd love to. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just like just keep my balance in my life, like play, play enough pickleball, but also kind of keep my commitments outside of pickleball. Yeah. Stay I think, sane. Yeah. Stay sane. Just make sure I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I definitely want to like also just getting better shape, like doing a lot more yoga. Um, I want to keep doing that like at least once a week Mm -hmm. just to kind of be able to play it, um, all the next year. You know, I don't want to avoid getting injured and I think that it's something that I neglect. Okay. Uh, I definitely neglect the stretching side too, but I have been doing yoga. I I used to make fun of yoga, but I do a, a class. If you're making fun of yoga, do a class. And then you will be so sore the next day, and you'll also be falling around because you have no core muscles. And, yeah. uh, I mean, yoga is legit and super fun, and you can do it for free on YouTube. Yes, absolutely. Which I think is very, very cool. So so pro qualifiers. Oh, and the last thing before I let you go, um, I've been asking all the high-level players because we already know James's take, which could be – who knows? Let's see how you feel on this. So open tournaments. Um, I was talking with Ron Cortese about – bringing more of a um, a uh, AIP style type draw where you're getting in and, 
and you're doing bracket or pool play and then move it into a single elimination bracket. And, and my reasoning behind it is um, it seems like the four or five brackets are, are not existent anymore. A lot of four or fives are playing up into open. Um, but guys like me, and then I'm looking at the names on the list and going, do I want to spend $150 on this tournament to potentially go to and out? Let's go 80% unless I play out of my mind. Um, where, what is your take on uh, pool play versus a straight uh, double elimination bracket? In, in the open world. And it's okay if James told me it's not charity. <laughs> that yeah. was his answer. Um, I'm personally a fan of the double elimination uh, bracket mm-hmm. style. I, I think there is value to the, the pool play. Um, I do like the idea of you're going to play a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. Um, you're getting more guaranteed games, not necessarily matches because, or yeah, I like the I like the double uh, double elimination. I just think um, the better teams are more likely to win, which I think is appealing for someone like me, um, who I, I think usually I am one of the better players in the draw for sure. Um, so yeah, I just like I it's funny. I actually had like a really bad experience um, in a pool play against James. Okay, I played with uh, our one of our top talents in the area, Arpit Deer. Mm-hmm. Um, I was very excited to play with him. And yeah, we had a very, very competitive four person, four team pool. And it came down to, we needed to beat James and uh, Gage. Okay. And right. We ended up losing it, um, in a really tight one. And we went one and two in our pool and we didn't get to go to the, the metal rounds and I had a very short day and yeah, just played three games to 15 and that was it. So yeah, I just think, um, I, I like the idea and I think maybe it might, it might make sense to have like one tournament out of the ones that he does every year via a, a, a pool yeah. to mix it up. But I think generally it should be double elimination. Okay. And cause I also just didn't like, cause this for the, so right. I ha- actually could have, I had my destiny in my future or mm-hmm. in my hands. Like I could have won that match and then got progressed. Um, and I think that's what I like about the double M is like, you know, you're really incentivized to win your first one. And then you need to win if you go into the back draw. Yep. It's like, you know that like, hey, if I win these games, I'm going to be still alive. Yep. Like, so the other, there was uh, Ben and Ryan, shout out to Ryan Kane and uh, Ben Wenger, really, really strong players in the area. And then we had Gage and James. And, and then we and had Arpit. me and Arpit. And we had these other two guys. I'll give them a shout out. Um, a Jay Matthews and... Uh, Daniel, I, I don't remember your last name. I'm sorry. But um, so, and, and what's this? I felt bad for them because I was like, hey, their last game, they already went, they already lost their first two. Yeah. And they're playing this game that just doesn't even matter anymore. Like they could win it and then it doesn't mean anything. Yep. And so I just feel like you're going to get a lot of like weird pickleball kind of scenarios. Well, I'm sure when they looked at the names in that bracket, they were freaking out a little bit too. They're like, oh my God, <laughs> top six guys in the area are all in our pool. <laughs> it's very tough. And it's like, hey, you know, it's, I just don't like the idea of them like not trying in a tournament match because yeah. they're already out. Yeah, that would suck. You and know, especially the points mean something in that. Okay, so you're the you're the second guy who. So you and James are on the same page, and that the open should be a double elimination traditional bracket. Yeah, and I just because you know, like a, a Jay and Daniel who got into our bracket. If they lose, they lose their first match. They they're going to get a weaker team in their second match, Correct. most likely. I just like that kind of like you're you know if you win, you're going to play a, a person who's also one or no. Yeah, like. It's, I just think in pool, it's just like, you know, it can just be like too random. So it's, it's interesting. And that, you know, I haven't, I didn't play a lot of uh, tournaments in 2023 um, simply because I know where I stand and a lot of local tournaments, in my opinion, you're just playing all the guys you play anyway. Yeah. Um, But the AIP's pop-up system has been really cool because like I said, in our, our pod that was just released, I'm willing to pay $25 to come out and play with, you know, a bunch of high level guys. And in the end, it does mean something. You want to win your money back. You want to win the money. And also, you know, personally, I like to win. Uh, But at the same time, if I look at the list, I'm not spending $150 to get games with Dave McNally or Mike Strain or, you know, fill in the blank. Um, But at the $25, like, it's cool to get to play with you guys, see where you stand 
and know that you're going to show up and get eight games. And I think that's solid. Oh, absolutely. And so maybe that's a situation for that and keep the tournaments more of the bracket style. Yeah. You, guys, you guys can change my mind. I'm open to it. Yeah. I mean, we always need more tournaments. Um, yeah. And I know, um, shout out to Frank Meredith in, in Maryland, who's been doing it longer than AIP has. Like, yeah, I, I think that's a great way to just get a lot of like competitive reps Um and again, like, you know, when you're running a tournament, like the Legends tournaments, the scale that Ron's doing it, it's tough. Mm -hmm. It's tough. AIP, you know, it's just much smaller overhead. You're yeah. usually kind of almost like a, you know, like a pirate ship. You're showing up someplace, you're getting it done, and you're out. That's it. You know, and you're not coordinating with refs, USA Pickleball. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, no, it's, it's way more informal, and I think there's a lot of value to that. And that's a great way to get better at a lower cost, and you can get in a bunch of reps and... Yeah, no, I, I think both should exist. Yeah, for sure. And uh, and thanks to Ron for running those big tournaments because my first tournament was also a Legends tournament. And, uh, you know, he's been doing it for a long time and he does it really well comparatively to a lot of the other tournaments that I've played out there. Yeah, I just think, I just know personally, like, I I just, of course I have my criticisms, but at the, but just far, I try to really just put it into perspective. Like, so thankful mm -hmm. that, we have these opportunities in our area. Yeah. So anyone who's doing something <laughs> and just not complaining about it, I'm so happy for you. So thank you and keep doing what you're doing. And yeah, I want to support it. And uh, yeah, just continue, continue grinding tournaments. I think that's just a great way to get better. I love it. I love it. Well, to the world out there, if you've uh, really liked what you've heard, uh, we're going to keep bringing perspective to pickleball in lots of different facets. I'm going to try to bring you really, really cool guests. And, uh, you know, please comment down there about the pod, how we can make it better. Um, so like and subscribe. And with that, peace. Peace.